Israeli President Yitzhak Herzog is flying to Washington tonight for an historic visit. While there, he'll meet with U.S. President Joe Biden and address both houses of Congress, making him the second Israeli president in history to do so. The following report has all the details. Israeli President Yitzhak Herzog flying to Washington Monday night at the invitation of U.S. President Joe Biden. According to the president's office, the purpose of the visit is to strengthen ties between the two countries and to reflect the deep ties between the countries that are above all disagreements. Herzog's visit comes amid increased tensions between the Biden administration and the Israeli government, as the U.S. president has refused to issue an invitation to the White House to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. While in Washington, Herzog will visit the White House and meet with with U.S. President Joe Biden and Vice President Kamala Harris, as well as Secretary of State Antony Blinken and National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan. On Wednesday, Herzog is also set to address both houses of Congress, marking 75 years of Israel's independence. This will make him the second Israeli president to do so, following his father, Chaim Herzog, over 35 years ago. Ahead of his visit, Herzog said that he is looking forward to representing the entire nation of Israel as president before the elected representatives of the American people. While in Washington, Herzog said he will emphasize the importance of expanding the circle of regional peace and will stress the need to fight against the Iranian regime as a global sponsor of terrorism and its nuclear ambitions. Herzog said he will also address the internal challenges facing Israeli society. Herzog has invited bereaved mother Leah Golden to accompany him on the trip. Her son, Hadal Golden, was killed in the 2014 Gaza war and his body is still being held captive by the Hamas terrorist organization. Golden will sit in with the president during his meetings in Congress and with the UN Secretary General and they will discuss the four Israelis currently being held in Gaza. And as the coalition advances, a small section of the legal reform calls for refusal of army service by reservists are intensifying. While no damage has been done so far, the defense establishment is concerned that if it spreads, the protest will cause harm to IDF's operational capabilities. More in this report. Defense Minister Yoav Gallant on Sunday night held an emergency meeting with IDF Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Helsi Halevi and other senior IDF officials to discuss the threat of the potential refusal of volunteers in the reserves to show up for duty in protest over the government's proposed legal reforms. According to multiple reports in Hebrew media, Gallant and Halevi are considering speaking to Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu in the coming days to express their concerns over the impact of such an event on the IDF. The meeting comes amid reports that hundreds, if not thousands, of reservists have threatened to skip military duty in protest, including Air Force pilots. The Israeli Air Force relies heavily on its reservist pilots who continue to train and to volunteer for active missions on a regular basis. Mass resignations of Air Force reserve pilots would significantly affect the IDF's operational readiness, including for any future strikes against Iran. As of yet, there has not been any damage to the operational capabilities of the IDF, the reports indicate that the army is concerned the calls for refusal will spread. The estimate, however, is that if some 400 pilots do not show up for duty, this will have a major impact on Israel's military capabilities. As such, the defense minister and IDF chief of staff have in recent weeks called on reservists to keep politics out of the IDF saying duty should remain above all other considerations. Yet, as the coalition advances the reasonableness standard bill for its second and third final readings, the calls to refuse to serve are likely to only intensify. Experience the power of truth with ILTV News. If you're looking for quality content and captivating visuals, join our news community and become an integral part of our team as we embark on a mission to unveil the real Israel dismantling the web of lies and misinformation that surround reporting on Israel. By subscribing to ILTV News, you will not only have access to the latest updates, but you will also amplify our message, creating a ripple effect that carries the truth far and wide. Subscribe today and help reshape the narrative, available on the web, Android, and Apple. And joining us now with more on the calls to refuse service among IDF reservists is former head of the military's prosecution office for Judea and Samaria, Lieutenant Colonel in the Reserves, and Attorney Maurice Hirsch. Thank you for joining us. Hi, thank you for having me. So the defense minister calling an urgent meeting last night. How serious of a problem is this as of now? I mean, to call an emergency meeting, uh, clearly this is being viewed as, as a major threat. So I think it has to be understood that whilst there are uh, um, uh, really high-level uh, discussions being held and calling the meeting by the, the Minister of Defence. 
to how to discuss how to deal with this new process and this new uh, uh, um, new occurrence of of, of soldiers um, really choosing when they uh, when they are willing to to turn up for for Miluim or not for for the reserve duty is something which shouldn't be confused with the fact that every single day there are tens hundreds and thousands of Israelis who are turning up for Miluim who are doing their service uh, um, loyally without any type of reservation as it should be serving in the army should not be a question of politics serving in the army is a question of Israel's survival and should not be a question of whether you support this law or another law. Israel cannot and should not ever agree to that being the, the, the situation. I mean, this certainly sets a dangerous precedent. Today, protests against uh, the legal reforms. Tomorrow, it could be against something else. I mean, how is the army currently handling this? So I think the army really is, is, is not handling the, the, this whole process very well, I have to say, unfortunately. Um, Whilst uh, in my last position, I was head of the prosecution for Judea and Samaria um, for the period of 2007 to 2010, I was the head of the prosecution for AWOL soldiers, dealing specifically with Israelis that dodged the draft or Israeli soldiers that ran away from, uh, um, from their, from their full-time service, and Israelis who refused to turn up for Miluim. Um, in 2007, I, uh, uh, um, as part of the general policy of the military adv advocate general, um, also imposed a stringent uh, uh, line on anyone saying that they refused to, gear to, to, to come to Miluim as a result of um, Israel pulling out of, of Gaza and of the disengagement. Because political decisions do not affect your duty and your right, really, to serve in the army. Those who are now saying that they're not going to come to Miluim after they've already passed the age where they're required to, um, it's fine. The army will manage and, and, and can, can function quite well without them. This idea that, 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 that there are people who are, who are really, uh, uh, that have no uh, um, other uh, uh, replacement is, is, is actually quite ridiculous. And, and the fact that the general press is, is, is running after this and saying, well, this is an ex-deputy head of, of, of Shmone Matayim, of the intelligence unit that's decided, well, he doesn't really want to come anymore. That's fine. The army isn't based on the idea that people necessarily volunteer after the requirements of the law. If those people wish to give up on their right, not only that it's not their duty anymore, on that definite right, on that, on that ability to be part of the fighting force defending the Jewish people, they're, 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 they're more than welcome to do so. But it should not be at any stage confused with the fact that tens, hundreds and thousands of Israelis are turning up for Miluim, turning up for their reserve duty every single day, sometimes endangering their lives, doing what is necessary, so, and that's how the army functions. You know, so, so what will happen if the reservists don't show up? I mean, I think the estimate right now is that if something like 400 pilots do not show up for uh, reservist duty, then that would affect the operational capabilities of the Israeli Air Force, for example. I mean, as you mentioned, we still have so many in mandatory service, so... You know, break it down for us. What will happen if these reservists, in so, fact, do not show up? So, unfortunately, it's not a question of, of, of just discussing whether the reservists show up or not. Um, I don't know how many, how many of, the, of the viewers actually heard that there was a recently a letter signed by, by 2,000 members of the ground crew in, in the Air Force saying, well, we support the judicial reform, and we are not willing to be considered as second-class citizens and our, and our voice not be heard or our voice be thrown really into the garbage. We demand that we be given exactly the same rights and respect as the pilots. If the pilots don't have any ground force, then they can't, uh, uh, they can't ever take off. So, so really looking only at the pilots and saying, well, without the pilots, we're going to have a problem. We should also look at the, the other side and say, without the ground staff, we're also going to have a problem, which is why it has to be stressed over and over again. If, if we look at the, the last... Uh, um, at least the last 20 years, which is the, the period that I've, that I've uh, uh, looked into and researched, of, of the election results, you'll find that there's a massive majority in the army that actually votes for the more right-wing parties. And if we allow politics into the army, if we allow certain people to say, I'm only going to serve on condition, then we're really opening the door to the fact that, well, maybe at the next time when the, when the, the country decides, well, we're going to pull out of certain areas of Judea and Samaria. And the soldiers suddenly say, you know what? 
I refuse to carry out that order. Absolutely. That's, that's, that's not something that can be allowed. That's a very dangerous uh, precedent. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel in the Reserves, Maurice Hirsch, thank you so much for your analysis today. Thank you for having me. So we know the news is volatile and fast-paced, and we want to let you know that ILTV's new app is now available. So if you want to stay connected to the latest news from Israel, the Middle East, and the Jewish world, download our app now on all your devices. It's available in the App Store for both Android and iPhone.